Hi all, I'm Rishidosh Kumar Chaudhary from My Learning, and uh, we'll be discussing transaction control and rollback statements in this class. We'll quickly look into this. Uh, okay, so let's say for example, all requests which we are getting that get delimited by the trigger or a class method or web service or visual force pages or an anonymous block that execute the Apex code. If the entire request completes successfully, all the changes which are committed to the database are being saved successfully. For example, suppose Visual Force page uh, called an Apex controller, which is in turn uh, calling an Apex class. Only when all the Apex code has finished running and the Visual Force page has finished running, uh, then the changes get committed to the database. If the request does not complete successfully, all the database changes are rolled back, right? So this is sometimes very inconvenient. So sometimes during the processing of the records, your business rule requires partial work. So say, uh, let's say for example, uh, already executed DMS statements, uh, uh, obviously uh, already statement uh, which has been performed or any DML statements which are already uh, executed, those DML stood, uh, are also rolled back because of this, right? Because if, if uh, let's say for example, I am having four DML statement, okay, first, second, third, and fourth. First statement is executed correctly without any error. Second is also executedly executed correctly without an error. But in the third one I want, I got an error. So in that case, whatever D, uh, DML, perform, uh, DML operation performed in the above transaction will be rolled back. But uh, I don't want. So I, I have a business logic that whichever DML is performed correctly, it should be committed to the database, right? So, so that the processing can continue in other directions as well. So Apex gives you that ability to generate a safe point. So what is a safe point? This is a point in request that specifies that state of a database at a, the particular time. So any DML statement uh, that occur after a safe point can be discarded at the database and can be restored to the same condition it was in the time when you generated the safe point, right? So this is the concept uh using which we can uh, make sure uh, let's say if some exception is happening uh, down the line in the apex code so earlier dml operations are also not rolled back okay so whenever uh, we are creating a uh, data database dot save point just remember we have a lot of uh, limitations as well. So if you set more than one save point and then roll back to a save point, that is uh, not last save point to what you have generated. For example, you have created save point called uh, SV1, S2, SV, first you created SV1, then SV2, then SV3, right? And from SV3, you're rolling back to directly to SV1. So SV2, what happens to SV2? SV2, uh, SP2 would no longer be valid. So you will receive a runtime error when you try to use SV2, right? So just make sure. So referencing to a safe point cannot uh, cross trigger invocation because each trigger invocation is a new trigger context. So if you have declared a safe point uh, as a static variable and then try to use it uh, across trigger context, you will again receive a runtime error. Understood. So each save point, uh, uh, the third limitation which you have that each save point you set counts against the governor limit for DML statement. So just remember that we can have, uh, there is a governor limit on the DML statements as well. So just make sure whatever uh, save point you are creating, uh, so governor, will, uh, governor limit will be counting for that as well. Okay, so static variables are not referred during the rollback. If you try to run a trigger again, the static variable retain the value from the first one. Make sense? So these are quite, uh, uh, these are the, whenever you write your uh, transaction control uh, and uh, rollback and create data save point, you have to make sure these things. Yeah, one more thing. Uh, each rollback counts against the governor limit as well. So uh, your data save point and rollback, both 
both will uh, uh, both will be uh, treated as a DML statement and uh, those DMLs, uh, because we have a constraint on the DMLs, uh, like we can have, we cannot have one, more than 150 DML statement inside a transaction. So uh, there is, uh, every statement, every save point and every rollback will be treated as a DML statements. And uh, the ID on the object, uh, ID on an S object inserted after the save, uh, save point is not cleared after a rollback. Okay, so when you create an S object to insert after a rollback, attempting to insert the S object using the variable created before rollback fails. Okay, because the S object variable has an ID. So updating or inserting or upserting uh, the S object using the same variable, same variable will also fail because the S object is not in the database and thus cannot be updated at all. Fine. So these are the uh, exceptions which we have. We will quickly see a demo how exactly we create a, a database save point and then we will proceed. Right. So over here, let's say we perform multiple email statements. So I create account here. Account. Let's say I will create a contact. Contacts you and new contact right last name a b c okay comma then test at the rate test dot okay i've read created a uh this thing i've created now what i'm doing i am i've created a contact now i'm creating a save point Okay, now what I'm doing here is, okay, I'm not inserted it. First, let me insert, insert con. I've created a save point. Now I will create, I'll try to update this particular contact. Contact email. Oh, contact oh, email. Okay, I have updated it. Now uh, update. Com. Now again, what I'm going to do, I want to do a rollback here. So the rollback will be. So I've created a save point here and I have created a roll boy, a roll back to that as well. Roll back. Okay. So I'll try to see my contact values. Contact email basically. Not even just see the records. Okay, let's execute. Debug log. So before the save point, I was storing test at the rate test.com. After a uh, save point, I have updated Rishi test at the rate test.com. And uh, if I roll back, just a minute, what have I done? It should not be. 
created a data save point here before execute execute okay delete okay uh, so i found out the cause in the developer console uh, system debug it's not printing but uh, if you will see uh, let's say for example i have given any value of email here is test at the rate test dot com and i execute my this piece of code what is going to happen so in the debug log it will give the value as after rollback also it shows rishi.test but when i will come here and see what value got saved the previous value got saved okay so the rollback is happening but it's not showing because uh, um, in in the order of execution it is coming uh, the rollback is happening in the last that's why it's not showing up here so system.debug mean you may not be able to use it system.debug instead of system.debug you can do assert equals assert equals will work here right so assert equals con email and uh, what you can do is comma you can check value right so if I execute this, okay, duplicates detected. First, I'll go and delete it. Yeah. So execute. Now oh, I'm not sure why it's not showing up as third equals, but in the database, it's happening. I've already shown you in the database. Uh, if you run it in the database, in the previous save point, whatever data you have saved, that data itself is getting stored. That's what yeah so this is all about uh, how exactly we create uh, safe points and how exactly do we roll back i have spoken about the limitations which while uh, creating the transaction control uh, that's all from this session we will uh, uh, we'll try to see another uh, section of apex that is exception handling in the next session Okay, now we'll see uh, what all uh, exception handling system defined uh, exception handling is there and how we can create a user defined exceptions. And then we will move to triggers. And that's all from this session. Thank you. We'll see you in the next section.